Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain what you mean by asymptotic notations. The concept of asymptotic notation is very very important in the subject of this design and analysis of algorithm because whenever we do analysis of any algorithm, so we need to find the time complexity of an algorithm and after finding the time complexity, we need to express the time complexity of an algorithm using this asymptotic notations. Okay, so in for every algorithm, we are using this asymptotic notation. So let us see what do you mean by asymptotic notations. Asymptotic notations are the mathematical symbols used to represent the time complexity of an algorithm. So there are three mathematical symbols, that means asymptotic notations, we are using to represent the time complexity of an algorithm. And they are big O, which is used to represent worst case of an algorithm, then big omega, which is used to represent best case of an algorithm, then the last one big theta, which is used to represent average case of an algorithm. These are the three mathematical symbols we are using to represent the time complexity of an algorithm. Okay, so now before going to discuss these three, let us discuss, I'm going to explain one simple example. If you are understood this example, then it is very, very easy to go through these concepts. Now assume a student is going to write, return the exam. After student return the exam, that student answer script is going to evaluate it. After evaluating, evaluation, student will got some marks. So now based on the marks you, the student obtained, so grade will be allocated. Suppose assume, suppose a student got marks in between 85 to 100 it will be awarded as grade O that is outstanding. Suppose he got the marks between 75 to 85, so then you get A plus grade, so A grade between 60 to 75 and B grade between 40 to 60 and anything less than 39 he will be fall under fail grade. Assume this is the grade. So now similarly in the exactly, so first we need to write the algorithm. After writing the algorithm, we need to do analysis. Why we are doing analysis? To know the efficiency of an algorithm. So to know the efficiency of an algorithm, we are writing the algorithm. Once we find the efficiency, then we need to decide whether that algorithm suits in worst case or it is suits in best case or it in suits in average case. So now how we are giving rank or grade to the students similarly after writing the algorithm. So for the algorithm we also need to say whether this algorithm belongs to worst case or best case average case in which case belongs to. So like that we need to grade that means we need to rank the algorithms. For to do rank the algorithms, we are doing analysis and then for that we have to use this asymptotic notations, these three mathematical symbols we have to use. Hope you understood now at least why we are using these mathematical symbols. Okay. So next now, let us one more example assume. Assume we need to move from one location to another location. We need to move from this location to here we need to move. So what are the different types of we can move from one place to another place either we can run okay i or, or we can reach through jumping or we can reach through walking or we can move using uh, rolling or crawling so like the, the different ways in which we can move over from one place to another place. Now among this, which will take very less time. So accord, so let us take, so how if we move from this place to this place by running, it will take very much minimum amount. Minimum amount of time. So we know that this will take minimum amount, minimum time. So now what and all the other ways we are using, so we cannot reach like running. So however we reach, the time we should take what? Lesser, greater than the 
this minimum greater than the minimum amount of time so that means we can say this is the best way of reaching from one place to another place by running for example okay so all other ways will take him more time than this running so we can so this is the best one similarly we know that among all these three among all these five so according so assume rolling is what rolling is taking maximum time so now whichever the other method will take that we should take time lesser than this maximum so that means so this will be the worst case that means moving from one location to another location so through rolling is the worst case so moving from one location to one location through the run is the best case so that means we know this best okay early so whichever the other method we use that has to take more than the best one okay similarly we know this is the worst way of moving it is taking maximum amount of time so however we move in other ways it has to take lesser than this time okay so this is the example for worst case and this is for the example for best case in this example now with this example now we will going to discuss these three notations big go big omega and big theta individually hope you people understood so thinking if people understood these two examples now we'll go forward okay this big go notation is used to represent the upper bound of an algorithm's running time algorithm's running time is time complexity okay so time complexity of algorithm's upper bound is represented using by this big go notation in this example of moving from one place to another place so we know that the running method is the best method we know and all the other method whichever the other other methods come that has to that has to we, we need to compare with the known one similarly among these we know rolling is taking the more time that is the maximum that is the slowest one and we know that any other method whichever the other method comes that method should have should has to take lesser time lesser than that that means here one we know and other things we need to compare with and then we can say whether this also like that or not whether it is taking lesser greater or what okay that means one we know for no we are taking one function called g of n this is a known function with which we are comparing okay similarly now another one the newer one other methods the other methods i'm taking the function like t of n so t of n is the function which we need to compare with the known one so for in order to discuss all these three asymptotic notations we are using two mathematical functions t of n and g of n where g of n is the known one with which we are comparing our algorithm t of n so these are the two some mathematical functions okay this is one known algorithm this is the algorithm for which we need to decide whether it is belongs to worst case or it belongs to average case or it belongs to the best case that we need to know so always we need to compare with the known one so for this one more example i will give suppose whenever we want to say who is the best batsman currently in the in the cricket so okay so whoever the batsman newly come that one we are comparing with the virat kohli right similarly here we know he is the best way best one okay and whichever the other algorithms we are comparing with this one so the known one it will called as a g of n and with which what we are comparing that we are calling as a t of n so we whenever we want to say our function t of n is said to be in big o of g of n that means our function is also worst big o is used for representing worst case our function t of n is also like worst like g of n okay that means assume here in this example grading assume the student who got some 39 is also failed so now whoever will score lesser than 39 lesser than 39 he is also falls under score that means the person 
who scored 39 are the person who scored 0. Both are failed. That means the person, now we know that the person who scored 0 and not failed he is the worst fellow. And we say the person who failed by taking 38 or 39 is also belonging to that fail category. In the same way, now if I want to say our function t of n is also belongs to worst case like this function and the same thing whatever written this year that will be denoted mathematically like this one t of n be said to be in big O of g of n such that it should uh, should exist some positive constancy and positive integer n not satisfying the constraint t of n should be equal to what here again i am telling t of n is the time complexity of our algorithm now we need to check whether our algorithm is also belongs to worst case like g of n here g of n is known this is the worst this is the worst Okay, this is the worst means this is taking too much of time. This is okay, this is taking too much of rolling is taking too much of time, maximum time. Now, whichever the other method comes, that obviously should take what? Lesser than this maximum. So our T of n should be less than R C G of n. So if it satisfies this constraint, then we can say our T of n belongs to big O of G of n. Okay. Now we'll discuss what is this n greater than or equal to n naught. Okay. Hope this equation you understood. Okay. This equation you should remember. Okay. So the function T of n is said to be in big O of G of n, which is denoted by T of n belongs to big O of G of n such that there exists a positive constancy and a positive integer in not satisfying the condition T of n less than or equal to C into G of n for all n greater than or equal to n naught. Now whatever we return in the form of definition, so same thing now we are to write in the form of graph. So here x axis indicates the problem size n and the y axis indicates the time complexity that is t of n so now up to dotted mark we have not written any of the graph so actually we need to start from the origin but we have started from certain point okay so that certain point we called as a break even point okay so this is called break even point i will tell you what do you mean by this break even point okay so now here i written two lines Okay, here which is maximum? Obviously, which is this one is maximum. Okay, we are discussing what worst case. Worst case means what maximum. No, we know that what so in the equation, so in the previous definition, we know that. So we know g of n is the worst. G of n is the one, and this is the taking more more time, maximum time. So this year also now it is which is taking maximum time, which is taking maximum time. This is one. Okay, so this should this should be what g of n. This should be g of n and always our t of n according to the, our equation what our equation says t of n should be less than or equal to c into g of n okay so t of n should be lesser so this is our t of n and here among these two which is which one we know earlier so this one so this is our prior analysis okay and this is our post analysis that means after analysis we came to know that this is also worse like this. That means see you can draw anyhow. Okay. But don't touch or cross these two lines. So the upper one this is a known one g of n should be upper and this t of n should be lesser than that's it. Okay. So this is the about big O notation. Okay. Hope you understood. Now with this now we will discuss what you mean by big omega that is the best case. So we know what big O is used to express what upper bound whereas big omega is used to represent what lower bound of an algorithm running time okay this is used to represent upper bound big omega is used to represent the lower bound that means the minimum amount of time that is the best case so for big O what the function t of n is said to be big O of g of n but here the function t of n is said to be in big omega of g of n such that Denoted by T of n belongs to big O, big omega of G of n such that there exists a positive constancy and positive integer in not satisfying the constraint T of n greater than or equal to. Now why greater than or equal to? Here we know this is the known one. This is the best one. 
okay this is it taking the minimum time this is the fastest i know this is the known one okay g of n whichever the other function it will take it has to take what little bit greater than or almost equal to g of n so then suppose our function is also taking almost equal to this g uh, this known one or it is taking little bit then we can say our algorithm also belongs to best case Okay, so again coming to this example, suppose if a student scored 100, we know that the person who scored 100 is the best one, he is the best one. The person who scored 99 is also best, you see he is also best, okay, the person who scored 90 is also best, Be outstanding. So similarly, if our know our algorithm T of n is taking little bit more than or almost equal to the best one so then we can say our algorithm also belongs to the best case okay so now whatever the definition so again we'll write in the what graph form so this is the graph for what worst case now what are the changes here now here which is taking minimum the best one so the, here which is known one g of n g of n is known what best that is taking lesser time and t of n should get more than so here what we have to do we have to just we are interchanging these two then that becomes the graph okay so according to the graphs we know that this g of n is the known one and it is taking the lesser time this is taking the lesser time okay now whichever the algorithm the t of n that has to take little bit more than or greater than this one okay so this is our known so this is a priorly we know that this is the minimum so this is after analysis you know this post analysis and up to n naught we are not written any of the graph why because all the algorithms will be fast what the smaller problem says we know that n x axis n n indicates a problem says for 0 1 2 3 like it goes on right so for the smaller values all the algorithm work faster only. Suppose if I ask you people, what is 1 plus 2? Immediately within no time, you people will say 3. 1 plus 2, 3. Suppose if I ask 1 plus 2 plus 3, then again you will take very little, very little time and you can you will say 6. Suppose if I say what is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7, like that. That means as the problem size increases, then only time taken by the individual varies. Okay, so for the smaller problem size, every algorithm runs faster only. Only when the problem size increases, then only the different methods or different algorithms start taking different times. So it is not possible to predict the behavior of the algorithm for the smaller instance. So only we can predict the behavior of the algorithm after a certain point. Hence that point we call as a break-even point. Okay, so we know what is big O and big omega. If we combine these two, then so we know that so okay we know the two end so this is the best case so this is minimum and we know this is maximum worst case okay so anything in between this is what average case okay so that we are going to discuss now see here we know that our t of n is belongs to average case means you should have two constants c1 c2 so that means t1 should be always lesser than the this is the worst case and it should be greater than the best case. That means it should be in between water. As I told, it should be in between the best case and the worst case. So our function t of n is in between the worst case. It should be lesser than the worst case and it should be greater than the worst case, or best case. Okay, it is in between. So on the graph, this is our t of n. This is our prior knowledge. Okay, prior post analysis. These two are prior. This is no, we know this is the worst. It is taking maximum time. This is minimum time. And our average case, our algorithm should take anything in between. Okay, so this is the graph for our average case. And this is the equation for our average case. Hope you people understood. Thank you.